Please join in singing our opening song, number 303, Gather Us In, number 303. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. So, with you. Every Sunday since Easter, we gather to celebrate the astonishment of Christ changing everything for us, the promise of eternal life. Of these mysteries, then we ask the Lord mercy, his peace, his forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. and kindness follow me all the days of 
of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want A reading from the book of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to one spirit, to the Father. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus, reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers. They had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at a place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing. You may be seated. Thank you. It's a great joy and blessing to be with you today and to celebrate this Mass and to pray with you. I was here for the um, Fall Festival Mass back in 2019, those blessed pre-COVID days. I've been here to visit the school and for other occasions, but never just Sunday Mass here in church. So I'm grateful for the invitation. 
being here also gives me the chance to publicly thank Father Jim. Thank you for your priesthood, your ministry, your pastoring, all that you do here at St. Williams. I'm so impressed with this parish and your school. It's truly a remarkable community. Also gives, yes, thank you. It also gives me a chance to thank all of you, just for your fidelity to the Lord, you know, for your love of Jesus and your, your love for the church. So it's always a joy to come down to Janesville. I got up at 5 o'clock this morning and said, today's going to be a great day. I get to drive to Janesville and to be with everybody at St. William's. So many, many thanks. I also want to give a plug for your uh, raffle. I brought two tickets this morning. So uh, buy some tickets for the raffle to make sure I don't win, right? You can <laughs> increase the chance of that. I just invite you to ponder with me for a few moments the absolute astonishing good news of our faith. And the centerpiece, of course, is Jesus risen from the dead. We believe that on Easter Sunday morning, Jesus Christ rose from the dead, and in the power of that victory, he offers us the forgiveness of our sins. He makes us beloved children of the Father, his very brothers and sisters in the family of the church. And he promises us eternal life. So if we are faithful to God in these relatively short years of our earthly sojourn, if we put our faith and trust in the mercy of Christ, if we live a life of discipleship and of prayer and pursuing holiness, we will live with God forever in the glory of heaven. We need to ponder that perhaps more often than we do because we can get so stuck in the obstacles, the difficulties, the sorrows, the crosses, the anxieties of this life that sometimes we forget who we are, to whom we belong, and where we are going. So how important the Mass is for us. Because when we step into the Mass, we step into that timelessness of God. Today's Gospel, Jesus invites his apostles who have just returned from these apostolic missions of preaching and healing and teaching. He says, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest. And maybe it was certainly to catch up on sleep, just to get a little break from the crowds who still follow them. But I can't help but think that it was a deeper rest that Jesus was speaking of, to rest in his heart, to be in union with the Lord in a place of silence and solitude and peace, to step into the heart of Christ and to find there uh, the glory of God's love for us. That's what Mass is for us. The ancient Greeks had two words for time. One was chronos, the other is kairos. Chronos is sequential time, chronology, the world of calendars and clocks and schedules and appointments. Chronos, chronos time is when you've been seemingly at work or school for hours, for hours. And you look at the clock and it's 9.07. Chronos time can drag sometimes, right? Kairos time is amazingly different. Kairos time is when you've been doing something for five hours and it feels like five minutes because you've been taken up out of yourself. You've had an experience of transcendence. Think of being immersed in the beauty of nature or spending time with the people that you love the most. Think of an artist who's writing a book or painting a picture the creative act. But ultimately for us, Kairos time is when we enter into the vast, beautiful world of the resurrection of Christ. So when we come to Mass, we step out of the Kronos of this world and we step into the Kairos of God's timelessness. And so this Mass, every Mass, is a participation in the liturgy and the life of heaven, where time stops and we're simply in this eternal present moment with God. When people ask me, what do you think heaven's going to be like? I always say it's going to be a lot like going to Mass. And sometimes they look at me, right? But when you think about it, what do we do at Mass? We come together to worship and praise God. We're joined together in the communion of the church with the saints. And we sit down at the Paschal Feast of the Lamb 
and are fed with the Eucharist. What are we going to do in heaven? We're going to praise and worship God. We'll be gathered together forever in the communion of the saints, and we will sit down forever at the Paschal Feast of the Lamb. Exactly the same thing. So Mass is a school, in a sense, where we learn how to live the life of heaven so that when we get there, we're ready and we know what to do, and our hearts are awake and prepared for the amazing gifts that the Lord wants to fill us with. So thank you for coming to Mass. Before COVID, on any given Sunday in America, maybe 30% of baptized Catholics came to Mass. And we're trying just to get back to that point post-COVID. So it's hard when you've been in a habit of not going for a year and a half to suddenly come back. So we need to think, how do we evangelize? How do we invite? How do we re-engage? So thank you for being here today. Because your presence says that you understand on some deep level the meaning of Sabbath. The Jewish people honor Saturday as Sabbath, the seventh day when God rested at the end of creation. Christians switch Saturday to Sunday because it's on Sunday that Jesus rose from the dead. So Sunday's a different day for us as Christians. When I was a kid, I'm old enough to remember stores were still closed on Sunday. Families still got together for dinner. Most people still went to church. In our culture, uh, Sunday Sabbath has become the weekend, a time when you catch up on everything that you couldn't do during the week. But that isn't how God intends it for us. So certainly the cornerstone of Sabbath is our, our Sunday Eucharist, our gathering as, as Christians to worship and praise God. But it goes bigger than that. It's that this whole day is consecrated to holy leisure, to prayer, to rest, to fellowship with our family and friends, perhaps to Sunday dinner, perhaps to a good long nap, maybe going on a pilgrimage to a shrine or doing some good deed for a neighbor, to fill Sunday with a different pace and to realize that, that this practice of Sunday leads us ever more deeply into our relationship with the Lord and really compels us to live in the present moment, to live in Kairos time, in the middle of a Kronos-driven world. And so maybe the most prophetic thing we can do in our frenetic, overstimulated, anxious, conflicted culture is to sit still and to rest in the heart of Christ, and to find the silence and solitude that gives us the peace that St. Paul speaks so profoundly of in the second reading to the Ephesians, this peace that comes from our relationship with God. So however you seek to live Sabbath, uh, the church encourages it, so that we can find on this, this seventh day or this first day, or this eighth day, depending on how you count it scripturally, it's all those things, that we find the resurrection of Christ as the very center of our life, our identity. We are beloved children of God, purchased with the precious blood of Christ and anointed in the Holy Spirit. So I say, next time you're at a party and somebody asks, who are you? Just say, I'm a, I'm a daughter or son of the Father. I've been purchased with the precious blood of Christ. I've been anointed in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's who I am. And watch them run for cover, right? <laughs> but that's who we are. What's our destiny? The eternal life of heaven. What's our mission? To spread the gospel and to live the faith of Christ so that at the end of our pilgrimage, we stand at the gates of heaven with people that we have brought with us and that we enter into that heavenly marriage feast forever. That's our mission. So to evangelize is to simply share with others the astonishing good news that we have discovered in our relationship with Christ and his remarkable love for us. My deepest prayer for you is that this Mass, indeed every Mass, every Sabbath, every practice of Sabbath, somehow plants a seed within our hearts and souls and deepens our experience of God's love for us that gradually, bit by bit, the Lord drops his grace into our hearts because we can't take it all in at once. And so in his mercy, he, he gives us what we can handle 
to expand our heart and spirit to receive even more. This year also marks the uh, 75th anniversary of the Diocese of Madison. It was in January of 1946 that Pope Pius XII created our diocese with land taken from Archdiocese of Milwaukee and Diocese of La Crosse. And the first event to kick that off is a pilgrimage on Sunday, August 8th, beginning at uh, the Cincinnati Mound, um, the Dominican Sisters Mother House. And then we have a mass there at 8, and then we'll be walking approximately 11 miles to the town of Benton, where Father Mazzucchelli is buried. Father Mazzucchelli was an evangelizing missionary who really planted the seed of the gospel in southern Wisconsin. So I encourage you, if you can, mark that day and at least come to the Mass. Be great just as a moment for us to celebrate as a diocese uh, the wonderful work of our forebears, immigrants who came to this country with little more than their Catholic faith and yet built what became our beautiful local church. So please know of my, my prayers for you, my gratitude to you, my deep love for you as your bishop. We have 104 parishes, we have 45 schools, we have 190,000 Catholics, we have 140 priests, we have 11 religious orders, we have Knights of Columbus, we have Catholic health care systems, we have St. Vincent de Paul. It's a vast enterprise. And all of it's built on the faith and goodwill and stewardship of all of us together living the adventure of the gospel. So for all the good work of those who have gone before, um, and for all of you, I just give thanks and praise to God this morning. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, and the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in God's power and providence, we voice our petitions and the needs of the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer, that we may take time every day to rest in God's presence we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people respond to the call of Christ, doing good through vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church and its shepherds, for a deepening spirit of service to all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the diverse people of our community cherish one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that our deceased family and friends, especially for the parishioners, may be reborn in the new life of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those who have died from a drowning accident. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal needs and the needs written in our book of intercessions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we are. Heavenly Father, help us to love and serve you as you deserve, as you have given yourself completely to us in Christ. So too may we give our lives completely to you. All in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our song of preparation, number 458, Shepherd Me, O God, number 458. And sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought the completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake in this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer the sacrifice, especially your servant Francis of Pope and Donald our Bishop, order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, the entire people, all who seek you with sincere heart, 
Remember also those who have died in the peace of Christ, all of the dead, whose faith you alone have known. All of us, your children, grant the merciful Father, who may enter into heavenly inheritance, the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, the spouse, blessed Apostle, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, free from corruption, sin, and death, and we glorify you, Christ the Lord, in whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. It's this day our daily bread, and us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not a temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Mercy grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from and distress, as we await the hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, to your apostles, peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. The sign of that peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Jesus took the bread he broke. Jesus shared the bread he broke and said, Do this, do this in memory of me. Jesus took the wine he poured. Jesus shared the wine he poured and said, Do Of his promise in 
the triumph of His blood. When my spirit clothed in mortal, wings its flight to realms of death. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements today. We have our um, raffle tickets um, on sale over here. We have script over there, and that supports the school. And the raffle will be um, Sunday, September 12th, is Harvest Fest, um, and so that's our biggest fundraiser of the year. So uh, please take your envelopes and then um, turn them in, and you can always buy more raffle tickets because you never know um, if you're going to win. And actually, last time when Bishop Hying was celebrated Mass here, um, it was out in the tent, and he actually, when I called him up and says, you won, he said, come on now. <laughs> but he did actually win. So um, that was the, so you never know. So you can always buy more raffle tickets. Um, I think, there was a, I um, back to the parish, right? What? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He did do that, yeah. Right. You, you know, you so. forget these old things, you know. <laughs> But yes, he did. He was very generous um, and gave it back to the parish. So, um, anyways, uh, we do have a membership form in um, our bulletin. So, if you'd like to become a member, um, to um, fill that out. And then, um, if you know of anyone that um, we we were doing baptisms um, in the COVID time, and as we're slowly getting out of the COVID time, um, if you know of anyone that um, uh, uh, the babies weren't baptized, or maybe they're two or three years old. You know, to send them our way, and same thing with um, um, if you know of anyone that um, is getting married, you know, to send them my way as well as a sacramental marriage in the church. And so, some of you might wonder, you know, why Bishop Hying came uh, is, is uh, was invited this weekend. And so, um, 
actually Tuesday will be the official day, July 20th. Um, he's a um, he became a bishop. Um, so July 20th of 2011, he was an auxiliary bishop um, from Milwaukee for three and a half years. And then he went on to Gary, Indiana, uh, for four and a half, and then. Um, we're very grateful here in the Diocese of Madison that we've had him a little over two years now, so all that math equals 10. And so, um, again, I, I'd like to um, applaud him for all the things that he's done just in only two years um, for our diocese in his direction. And so we have some cake and we have some donuts and, and some fellowship in the narthex and the weather is nice so we can even you know go outside a little bit. So um, um, again, thank you very much, Bishop, for uh, coming today and celebrating Mass and being with us. Well, thank you, Father Jim, and uh, thank you for all of your kindness, for all of you. I'm just amazed that after 10 years of being a bishop, I'm still alive, actually. So uh, God is good. But it's, it's a tremendous blessing and privilege to serve as your bishop uh, just to, to be a bishop in a church obviously is challenging today and yet tremendous opportunity to, to lead and to love and to sacrifice, indeed even to suffer for the sake of the gospel. But every one of us is an integral part of the mystical body of Christ. So in God's eyes, there's, there's no one more important or less important. We just have different roles within the body. But it's a blessing to uh, be part of this local body, the, the beloved Church of Madison. So thank you for your prayers. And there's a lot of moving around in tenure, so I hope they just leave me be for a long time and I can just uh, stay here with all of you. That would bring me great joy. So thank you for your goodness. Uh, please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing song, number 728. Lead me, Lord, number 728.